What's happening, YouTube? We in here a little early. We on that TBS time. We come five minutes before the normal time doing. And look who I got <laughs> with me today. I got y'all's favorite YouTube wife. Oh, goodness. My wife. Hello, Crystal. everyone. Guarantee I'm going to make her make crazy faces at least twice. I know that's what y'all come here for. No. Mm. To see what craziness I'm going to say to make her squinch her face up. And this is going to be our episode number six review for Power Book for Force. We love Tommy, and we love some of them crazy sayings Tommy's got. My wife has got one that she likes, and I actually have that clip for, for us to show to the people. You okay. want to take a look at it? Oh, go ahead. But before I do that, let me shout out to everybody in the chat. I greatly appreciate when you guys come out when I bring my wife, and I like it when you guys let me know that you enjoy seeing her up here doing these reviews with me because she adds softness to my rough exterior. To my bulletproof oh, exterior, good. she adds the softness on Somebody top of Somebody got to reel him in sometimes because you get unhinged, unfortunately. <laughs> so let me ask you guys, what do you like? Do you like a hinged Lamont or unhinged Lamont? Post your comments down below. Shout out to everybody in the comment section. Let's take a look at a clip that my wife really liked where Tommy was being <laughs> Tommy. Well, you can't have one without the other. Things got real tight. I used oh, no, to fuck that. Around. Fuck that. And fuck you. If you think you're going to get close on this. Just because you moved some weed because you thought it was cool. Oh, no, no. It wasn't whatever. just weed. Oh, whatever. I don't give a fuck if you was the Tony Montana of the Midwest. You ain't getting near this shit. You ain't getting near my shit. Never. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't have one without the other. What? Things got real tight. I used oh, no, to move fuck that. Around. Fuck that. And fuck you. If you think you're going to get close on this, just because you moved some weed because you thought it was cool. Oh, no, no, it wasn't whatever. just weed. Oh, whatever. I don't give a fuck if you was the Tony Montana of the Midwest. You ain't getting near this shit. You ain't getting near my shit. Never. I just need to catch a motherfucking break. Well, man. it ain't going to be with this. <laughs> she loves the way Tommy. You're not getting near my. You're not getting uh, near uh, my. It's you know? just like his inflections <laughs> and the way that he talk and put emphasis on certain words. It's just like classic Tommy. So he had me crack it up. Crystal, Joseph Sakur is a classical uh, train act. Uh, and I'm just picturing him like when he was running those lines, like just practicing in the mirror or whatever, how he was going to say that part. Right. The, the, yeah. That's, yeah. I love Tommy. Dude, Go got ahead. it, man. He can definitely do it. And ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you again if you like this power version, next Wednesday, I will be having my the actress playing my Paulina Wynn is coming through. She loves Black Lives Matters, she loved this show. And she's got a lot of other things she starred in that we're going to ask her about, as well as what can we expect her to see? Will she get back somehow into the power universe? Maybe another show. So, honey, they start to show out where everybody is having to bury bodies. Mm -hmm. Claudia is burying Mai. Mm -hmm. The fellas is at the funeral burying E. And you saw Diamond give money to E's mama. I'm assuming that was E's mama. Mm -hmm. And then you also seen them having something for Simon, ironically, in Glow's bar. Uh -huh. <laughs> they, they have they have his funeral procession in the bar. Was that her bar? That, yeah, this is her bar. This okay. is Glow's bar. They're having it in the bar. Talk to me about what was this trying to tell us as viewers in this portion of the story where everybody having to bury bodies, uh, except for one person. Yeah. So, I mean, they're they're recovering and regrouping from the, the loss that they suffered last week. Um. And I get like you said, the highlight is that Tommy hasn't lost anyone that's close to him. So when mm -hmm. I saw this, I'm like, uh oh, they they gonna they gonna have an issue with Tommy because mm -hmm. here you go coming through and making them lose me and and all you doing you you didn't have anything to lose. Mm -hmm. Well, he had Lily, and the Serbs didn't kill Lily. I mean, right. Li it, Lily yeah. Lily was basically saved. Due to Jannard's interference. Yeah. And that's it. It makes it even worse, though. It's like you had somebody to lose, but you didn't lose her. Right, right. Now, we'll get there in a minute. So everybody's having to bury their bodies. They're all feeling pain. Everybody's upset. We also learned that this was Claudia's first body. First body. Yeah, we knew yeah. that last week. Uh-huh. Yeah, we knew that. Okay. We, we knew that. Well, I'm just catching up. Sorry. I'm behind. And dur during this funeral, 
dad is he's beside himself. This dad is stay beside himself because he wants to know exactly what the hell his son did to lose his friend from three years old, Simon, mm -hmm. you know, and he sends Claudia to talk to him. And Claudia is worried about the dad coughing. And when they go outside, Vic wants to get in on Claudia's business. Mm -hmm. Claudia's like, nope, that ship has sailed. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. <laughs> Claudia, I mean, Vic still don't know who this business is being done with. Right. How do you right. think he's going to behave when he finds out that first, the man that screwed my soon-to-be wife is now in cahoots with my sister? Uh-huh. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. I just laughed that she didn't let him in on it. She make it sound like... uh you know, is not even a, 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 a option anymore. Almost like she's not even doing it anymore. And that's what she did. She gave that impression. She said, you know, it was a it was a designer drug. It came and it went. Well, that's because she don't want him knowing and being able to run interference at this moment. And she did give him the chance. Mm -hmm. He said no. Right. You know, right. daddy said no. Uh -huh. But guess who gave her a chance? Tommy. Mm -hmm. Tommy and Lily yeah. gave Claudia a chance, and she's gonna take that thing and run. She said, with "Nope, it. this is my horse. This is my my money. Mm -hmm. You ain't <laughs> getting none of this, brother. I love you and all, but you ain't getting none of this." Now, this is Tommy going back to all the people he's supposed to be in business with. Honey, they had a little meeting behind Tommy's back, and they kicking him out the club. Mm -hmm. They don't went from the four horsemen to the three amigos. Tommy, you out. Right. We'll give you 38 a key and you out this business. Tommy's a little upset, but he's kind of not because he know what he got going on with Dahlia is going to take over the streets. Mm -hmm. And how do you think Tommy is rationalizing in his mind how he's going to have to deal with these guys when they find out that there's some competitive drug that's better than what they pushing yeah. and they're going to have to deal with it? Yeah. Floor is yours. You know what? They should have been suspicious that, you know, Tommy was... Getting out the game he so easy. So easy. Yeah. He was just like, oh, okay. Um, you know, good luck to y'all, basically. Good luck. Yeah. I and I thought it was funny how, well, I guess you shouldn't be surprised that they would kick you out, considering they lost some people that were close to them. And he ain't and lose he, nothing. Right. He didn't lose anything. So mm -hmm. here you have you basically coming in benefiting off of our loss. So I don't like the way Jan I don't like the bass in Janar's voice toward Tommy. You understand? I don't. He need to take some of that bass out of his voice when he addressed Tommy. Uh -huh. You know, because he don't know who he's messing with. Uh -huh. He think he know, but to me, Janar versus Tommy, you still talking about a, a teenager versus a grown man. Mm -hmm. If they was to get into a one on one situation, mm -hmm. but we do know that now that this split has happened, now that the four horsemen have been broken up. What is it going to be that's going to bring them back together? Because you know exactly. something is going to have exactly. to bring, bring them back together. And so. that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, okay, so they spent most of this whole season getting trying to get this group together. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden it's a wrap. Right. You're like, no, that's not going to fly. So no. you know something is going to happen eventually. Um, it, maybe it's the Serbs coming down on everybody here and they're going to have to band together like a super team. I don't know. But it's not over. No, it's no, not over. No, no, it's not over. Not over. Then we get to Daddy Flynn, who, ladies and gentlemen, take the picture down. This episode was when I bought into being afraid of Daddy Flynn. Daddy Flynn sold me on this episode that he is a fierce drug lord. And we'll get there closer to the end. Mm -hmm. But the FBI is raiding his dialysis center. Honey, you're a kidney doctor. Why do we not own a dialysis business? If, if he's got one fronting for drugs, why we can't own a real one where we really doing kidney procedures? Mm -hmm. Can we get one? How much they cost? We can't afford it. I don't want to do one. <laughs> you don't want to do one? No. Why not? I, like, I do research. I like mostly research. I count, I count, I count money. Uh -huh. So I want to do one because it looks okay. like it's a printing press for money. Mm -hmm. I want to be like Daddy Flynn. I want to have a dialysis unit. We making so much money. I don't even know the password because I'm too busy counting the money like oh, you goodness. did. Okay. He was he couldn't remember a password. He texts his daughter. She was busy handling business with Tommy. And when she finally got there, she had to put in the password to get the document they wanted. And she got them and was able to get them out of there. But Daddy mm -hmm. Flynn was mad with her. Right. And did you hear her whisper? 
you only want me for this. Are you mad because I wasn't here? Or are you right. mad because you don't know how to do what I do? <laughs> Daddy Flynn said both. Right. So, so talk about this relationship between Daddy Flynn and Claudia. I mean, do they have her that much under their thumb that they know where she is 24-7? And that's what it make it seem like. So is she supposed to be there? That was her post. She was supposed to be there day in and day out. Apparently. Apparently, you know, I mean, because he's not letting her get to the, the top of the chain because, mm -hmm. you know, they have that strict male patriarchy. They racist. Mm -hmm. And women is only good for being secretaries, teachers, and nurses, mm -hmm. and accountants. Mm -hmm. And that's the way he's running this business. She wasn't there. But at the end of the day, she was at a she was a phone call away. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. granted, I mean, yeah. he might be suspicious, but it took her a while to get there. That's what he's suspicious about. Uh, like it took you too long to get here. Right. Where were you at? Where were you? And, and, and at the end of the day, what was they gonna do? Like, was they gonna arrest him if he couldn't print these documents out? In in, like, in what ten minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you got ten minutes to produce you the got documents. Ten minutes to produce documents, or you're yeah. going to jail. That was a little too. Intense. Yeah, that that <laughs> stop it, stop it. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, that would have made them look horrible. They would have arrested him. He would have been out like that, mm -hmm. and then he could have done a lawsuit. You know how this thing go in real yeah. life. Yeah, but, I mean, he could have been been irritated that, you know, the longer it takes them to produce the documents, the more time they have to snoop around. True. So they might have been there looking yeah. around and putting their nose where he didn't want it to be. So A guy like him does not survive and stay out of jail as long as we assume he's been in this game without knowing having precautions for stuff like this. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. Yeah. So, and then we get the next scene where, oh Lord, this, this I'm nervous about this. Jannard is making plans on behalf of CBI. They know Murkovich, Mucinix is coming back. <laughs> he's going to want some revenge uh -huh. and they know he's going to have one gun out a window. And he's going to have another hand for money. Now, Jannard comes up with the plan. We're going to save 10%. Put all that money in escrow, and we're gonna be prepared for when the Serbs come back. It's gonna be like insurance. Mm -hmm. All that sound good, honey. But what kind of insurance do you really think the Serbs want? They're gonna want they're gonna want bodies, they probably gonna want money, they're gonna want you out of the game, period. Right. They're gonna want that pipeline, they're gonna want ain't nobody right. coming back to be your friend when you using the pipeline that they done put in place to make money, and you think they're only gonna want 10%, honey. Get, Get Tommy back with this crew. I mean, they looking like new addition without Johnny Gill. Oh, Get Tommy goodness. back oh, quick. Okay. Get him back. Go talk. Talk about. I was it. even more surprised that uh, what's the name co-signed it. Um, uh, Diamond. Diamond. Yeah, I'm like, okay, that sounds like an easy fix. That sounds too easy. Yeah. And like you said, they're not gonna come back just for money. They want retro. You have to pay for this with somebody's life. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. And so they wrap that up too too neatly with the bow, and it's not gonna fly like that. Yeah. L ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I don't know how you get in this game and you sleep at night anyway. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. This is the definition of you do things that allow you to sleep at night, whether they're immoral or whatever, whatever lets you sleep. Lets you I couldn't do this anyway, but I would really have a hard time trying to do this knowing that these Serbians who are supposed they built them as big, bad and powerful to the point where they so scared they broke up the four horsemen because they that worried about the serving. They kicked Tommy out. They that worried about them. And y'all still about to use their pipeline. And you think that a little 10% cut right. is going to save right. them. No right. way. Right. No way. Mm -hmm. Man, get out of here. Then we get Paulie, who, whether y'all hate him or not, I like him because of the quote unquote respect that he shows, finds Walter Flynn on the floor with a bruise on his head, bleeding. And in this scene, we it's confirmed that pretty much Walter Flynn has cancer. As Paulie's saying, it ain't right to not let them go to let them go through what happened with your wife again. She died from cancer, honey. Why is Walter kicking the can down the road from telling his kids that he's probably got cancer and not going to the doctor? It's I mean a number of things. It's, you know, it's a sign of weakness. He doesn't want to show that he has a weakness to his kids. Oh, okay. Um, and okay. then the other thing, he's a man and some men feel like they can tough it out or they don't need doctors. It, like he says, it's just a cough. It's just bronchitis. He's just brushing it off. He's a man and he's he going to beat whatever it is. He don't need doctors. <laughs> <laughs> he going to beat bronchitis? <laughs> 
How is he gonna beat bronchitis? He's gonna pull out his gun and beat and it, it, and, and, ain't, it ain't bronchitis, it's cancer. I know he's, that. he's still okay. this, this male bravado <laughs> that he doesn't need, ca you know, ca I don't need to address this. If he had cancer of the penis, you think he'd go to the doctor for that? <laughs> I hope so. Okay, dude, uh -huh. it don't matter what your sickness is, you can't be your best you without getting it fixed. And you might be in a position where you can get it fixed now and still have high quality of life. This is dumb. Men, stop this mess about not going to the doctor. That's why women live longer than us, because we don't go to the doctor. Take your asses to the doctor, get checked up, and stop this foolishness, male bravado BS. Because while y'all in the grave, I'm sitting around here laughing with all the women. Oh, what? Go, go, get off me, go. <laughs> <laughs> In the next scene, we get D Mac meeting up with Jannard. Now, remember, this is Tommy nephew, mm -hmm. JP son. Now, this is what I don't get. If you done with Tommy Jannard, why are you putting a spy on him? Mm -hmm. Why are you paying somebody five G's to spy on Tommy? If you really, if you really that done with him, mm -hmm. this tells you he's got he's fearful of Tommy. Mm -hmm. This tells you he's still worried about Tommy, that he's paying somebody 5Gs to follow Tommy around. Talk about that, honey. I mean, so could it be that he thought Tommy slinked away too easy, the way that we were saying they should be suspicious? So he could think that, you know, maybe Tommy got some other side dealings going on, right. and that's why it was so easy for us to kick him out the group and dismantle everything that we had kind of worked towards building. Mm -hmm. That's one thought. The other thing is, like, is he still planning to take Tommy out? So mm -hmm. he might be just trying to keep tabs on Tommy mm -hmm. to see what he's doing mm -hmm. so that eventually, when he's ready, mm -hmm. he can have somebody snipe him out. And that's what this guy, the the the, the, little, the boy, little boy, because that's what he is, a little boy, that's what he said. I need another five grand if you want me to. If you want me to kill him, but for right. now, I'll just keep an eye on him. I think Jannar knows Tommy's hanging with Lily. Now I know y'all still trying to say that Jannar don't want Jannar wants Lily somehow, some way. He either wants her expertise and resources of cutting the drugs, or he he might want her for a little more than that, or it could be both. And I think if I had to guess, it could be both. Now, D Mac following Tommy around gives Jannar the opportunity to see how Tommy is moving, not just by himself, but anything going on with Lily, who they like as someone to cut up their drugs. Mm -hmm. And now that they got more drugs and a pipeline, I'm sure he wants to get some of her back. And eventually he's probably gonna want to get some get back at Tommy. Because they look at Tommy probably now as, you know, more so the uh, adversary mm -hmm. and competitor than someone who's on the street helping them out. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I think more so, he's just jealous of Tommy because Tommy came in and made a big splash on Diamond and on Vic, two people that's supposed to kind of not like each other, mm -hmm. and they both jailed and coerced for Tommy. Mm -hmm. And he wants to be the kind of dude that make that happen. And to this point, he ain't made nothing like that happen, not yet. The right. only thing we've seen out of him is licking Lily's deep river scar on her face, mm -hmm. intimately licking it like this. Oh, Lamont, stop. <laughs> You're going to be in here by yourself. Okay. Moving right along. Then we get Lily scoping out the transportation spot. Now, was some of y'all thinking course correct? Only difference is this was in a transportation spot and not on the top of a, a college class, that's college the, dorm. That's the first thing that came to my mind. I'm like, okay, they, they about to pull a Tariq. <laughs> well, no, not really, because Ghost and Tommy was doing this type of business on the first Having power. drop spots Yes, stuff? yes, okay. yes. But it just, because we just seen Power Book 2 Ghost. With all the lockers yeah, yeah. and this, everybody This, this, rem day. this yeah. reminds you of that. And Tommy is explaining to Claudia about how he's done this before. This is a perfect place for the distro. You ain't got to worry about nothing, yada, yada, yada. And then she says to him, okay, so they're not going to be able to detect somebody looking like you, Tommy, a big time New York drug dealer. Uh -huh. And then Tommy went and put on, what kind of suit is this, huh? This is like a four piece suit. The uh -huh. back would cut out and shit. Like uh -huh. what, what, what was this suit? Right. This is how right. a boss come down the stairs. Uh -huh. I enjoyed it. Now he looked straight up like, one of the dudes that you would see at one of these conferences, medical conferences, whatever, with oh, the oh. little tag around his neck. In this, in this bag. case, they thought he was a hedge fund manager because uh, you saw the police asking for a cryptocurrency tip. Uh -huh. 
And yeah. he said, I like to keep my money in the mask. So Tommy, he, Tommy definitely know how to switch it up and turn into mm -hmm. cornbread. White you know, dude. Yeah. He <laughs> used he using his white privilege. Uh, you know, yeah, we've yeah, seen that. Yeah. So um and it, it would have sold me because <laughs> he looked <laughs> he don't look like Tommy whatsoever. He even got the little little the hair in the front all kind of spiked yeah, up a little uh -huh. bit. <laughs> he he pushing the line of looking like one of them QAnon boys. That's oh, what he's goodness. doing. Briefcase in hand, little neck collar in hand. Mm -hmm. They asked him about crypto. He said, I keep my money in my mattress. Uh -huh. And and I hope they don't listen to that because, ladies and gentlemen, putting your money in a savings account is not beating inflation. OK, you at the very least have to put it in an ETF, a mutual fund, an index fund, something that's going to beat inflation and hedge against inflation. And stocks is the way you hedge against inflation. They should have asked me that. Mm -hmm. I would have gave him a dissertation. Mm -hmm. But Tommy, on the other hand, he old school. He keeps his money in his mattress. And I'm going to tell y'all the truth. My grandma keep money in the mattress and the refrigerator. That's where the term cold cash comes from. My grandma don't believe in banks and crap like that. Only bank she believe in is the piggy bank that got Piggly Wiggly on it that mm -hmm. she got in her under her bed. Mm -hmm. That's what she believed in. Mm -hmm. And so after they get the plan, so they you should... Just, you just blew up your grandma's spot like that? Yeah, because I want her to put her money somewhere where it can oh, grow. Oh, goodness. It's right. okay that you just told she got a piggy bank. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or she used to. Right. She used to until she took your advice. Ladies and gentlemen, this piggy bank is this big. So if you try to rob it for something, you're going to get like $5.99, oh, period. Goodness. Yeah, you're not going to get nothing. <laughs> you know, I'm telling her, I still want her to put that into a stock account somewhere. Put your $5.99 in a stock account. And so after that, they start to execute the plan Tommy's talking about. Lily is going around. Now, remember, Tommy scouted all these people when he first got to Chicago. Mm -hmm. So he's going to the Latinas. And we said he was going to be back with them. Yeah, he yeah. told them. He basically yep. just put them on hold and, you know, I'll be back, mm -hmm. basically. Right. So he went, he he goes to the Latinas first. This is the first, This is the chick he went to and was trying to make small talk about nice car. Right. She wasn't hearing it. Uh -huh. I love how Lily goes in there. L Lily got big balls on her. Mm -hmm. She don't care. She talking junk to the men. She don't care. Right. And she gives her the package. Then she goes over here to, to these kosher niggas. And gives them the package. Watch your mouth. Ain't they kosher? Uh, go. Wait, look at her face, y'all. Ain't they kosher? Lamont. Ain't they kosher? Mm. Jews? Which one is it? Kosher Jews? How you wanna do it? One way or the other one? Lily gives them the package, right? Mm -hmm. And what happens next? What happens next? You you done with the you done with the, the no, review? just go. I'm listening. I'm asking you what happens next when she gave them. I mean, the they go pick it up. They go go to the spot where Tommy them had them pick up pick up stuff out the lockers, and they take they stash back to they hide out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tommy, with Tommy watching the whole thing, watching all of it, watching their expressions and reacting, and he. He getting all happy because he can't wait. He can't he wait. He know what's gonna happen when they get back to the uh now. Their yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Lord, wait till y'all see that. So he's in the car right now with Claudia, mm -hmm. and he's letting Claudia. Know. Well, basically, he told Claudia he knows within fifteen seconds if he's gonna do business with somebody. Mm -hmm. And of course, Claudia wanted to ask about herself. What about me? What about me? You felt that way about me. And he said, I knew I was going to do business with you in 10 seconds. Uh, and this is a woman who's been kind of tossed and pushed aside and told, you know, you go sit over there and look pretty and mm -hmm. handle the books. Handle the so books. So that was like music to her ears. Right. Uh -huh. Rock the baby, yeah. all that. Uh -huh. You know, it, it's amazing how they've been able to kind of put all the movements we're dealing with in the world right now into this show. Mm -hmm. And women being able to do whatever they want to do because lots oftentimes have been held back by men. And you see when a man is like, no, I'm not going to hold her back. This chick has potential to bring us out. Mm -hmm. Tommy is letting her fly her wings, and she is flying it to the tune of this chick called a whole nother body. And we're going to get there in a minute. Oh, boy. Then the police pull over Pauly. And what do we learn about Pauly in this moment when the FBI pull him over, honey? He's somebody's brother-in-law. Oh, yeah. He's... um. Flynn. Flynn's He's brother -in -law. Flynn's brother-in-law. So his sister, you assuming his sister is the one who died of cancer, mm -hmm. and he's uh, Vic and Claudia's aunt, uncle. Right, yeah. right. And Did you know that before? This is the first time we... No, this is the first time they've said anything okay. about it. I mean, we kind of assume so, but didn't mm -hmm. say anything. 
And it it just it just further makes you wonder what's going to happen when these these FBI they're going to put pressure on Paul. You, this, this is not the end of it. And Paul okay? said he ain't singing. Do you think he is singing? No, don't, I don't think he's going to he sing. If he's old school as we 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 take him to be, he ain't saying nothing. He's not singing, but they're going to put pressure on his son. Mm. That's how they're going to get him. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to break him with the son, and they basically told him, "Look, we've got twenty five years of stuff we can get you for." Well, Paulie knew that was BS because if they was going to get you, they would have arrested you right there. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. He literally rolled up his window and, dismissed them and, said, and, and drove. What do you right. think would have happened if I would try to roll up my window and dismiss right. them? Pop, pop, there go my tires. Mm -hmm. Then next thing you know, pop, pop, pulling me out the car. Mm -hmm. But he just like, no, you ain't got nothing on me. You're not about to arrest me. Right. Peace. Peace. In, in your Martin voice. Yeah. Peace. Peace. <laughs> and rolled away. But they're going to squeeze him, ladies and gentlemen, through his son. Mark my words. Keep an eye on that. By the way, honey, they tuned out to see you today on Sunday. 250 people is in here to see, see you react to me, making oh, you make crazy man. faces. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share. And come back for the interview next Wednesday. I'm going to be doing with my. And also this Wednesday, I got the homie B. Avery. And we're going to review Power Book for Force and Bel Air and talk about his channel and what it takes to grow being a YouTuber in the movie TV space. Because I know a lot of y'all have been inspired and motivated by all the people I've been doing stuff with to get involved and start putting your opinions out there. We're going to give you the insight on what's going on. Okay. So now we get to this scene where D-Mac is looking in the window and realizes uh oh! Wait, Tommy know my my dad. Tommy know my daddy. Oh, who the, who, and you know what? Do you think he kind of went away thinking they were in a relationship? Maybe, maybe. Because he seemed maybe. like he maybe. he was in the, he was kind of rejected. Like, in their conversation yeah. at the time, he was talking about blowing rainbows up my butt or something. He was saying that you know, and she get on me. You hear that, people? That was it, what it, they were it, saying. It, it, they said you, something about but, rainbows. But you you ain't have to say the word. That's you, what he said. You didn't have to say the word. Tommy said unicorn and unicorns go up the rainbow butt or something like that. You ain't. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what she said, y'all, not me. And see how she tried to get Anyways, on me? Go ahead, finish so your statement. I think, he, I think he's looking at them thinking they're in a relationship together, potentially. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Whatever he's thinking, they have some relationship. It right. might not be in a relationship. This guy got me but following. Yeah, and it was enough for him to say, you know what? I don't this. want nothing to do I'm with I'm done this with this job. he's too close yep. to my daddy. He way too close to the daddy. And apparently, he might be done um, mm -hmm. interfering in daddy's life, ruining his business, uh -huh. apparently. But anyway. Now, do you think... So, it seemed like Tommy saw him following him as well. I, did y'all pick up on that post of comments? We both kind of thought that Tommy might have been aware because he, he's being yeah, followed. Right. Yeah. Right. So post your comments. But this conversation was really between Tommy and JP. We JP assumes Tommy was more than just a businessman, as Tommy said. Uh -huh. And they came clean with each other. And JP said, I'm still here for you. Right. But the one thing that JP wanted that Tommy ain't about to let him do. He want to get into business. Right. He need to make some quick cash. He needs some money, man. And you my brother. And, <laughs> and he was like, no, you ain't getting nowhere near this. <laughs> JP was like, look, I done sold something. And Tommy wouldn't let him say what he sold. Uh -huh. Tommy's like, I don't care what you sold. Uh -huh. You're not getting nowhere near this. Because Tommy's kind of got this feeling like the more I get family involved, he, yeah. this kind of business takes he me. He don't want to touch. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. You know, because look how he was looking when they had Lily. Right. Landmine Lily. Mm -hmm. How are they going to feel if they get JP? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So, And this is like his family It family. makes things too complicated. Mm -hmm. So we just keep you separate and I give you some money, which he said, I don't want any handouts, but Tommy rather just keep it clean and I'll give you some money when you need it. Yeah. And then we get this scene right here. See, ladies and gentlemen, this brother need a confidence booster. I'm talking about Jannard. He is so insecure about his position with CBI. He's up here begging his brother, so why you choose me? So why you choose me? So why you choose me? And, and Jay, it, Diamond is like, bro, why you ask me 10, 10, 21 questions? This ain't 50 cent video, 21 questions. Why you choose me? Why you choose me? And what did he eventually say? He, <laughs> he said, because you my blood, basically. Thank you. And I'm like, okay, Jannara look like. 
that wasn't a good answer. He wanted him to say, you know, I saw something special in you. You were this deep thinker. I knew you could handle it. He was just like, oh, because we related. <laughs> Honey, all that would have been lies. And Jannar was just like. Uh, if, if Diamond would have said what you said, all that would have been lies. Uh -huh. He told him the truth. Uh -huh. He said you got the job because you blood. Right. You know, right. Which. which which shows which could show stupidity on both parts. Number one, Jannar mentioned that there was people that was higher than him right. that had seniority. Yeah, next in line. Yeah, next in line. That might have been doing a better job than what Jannar could do. Mm -hmm. But instead, because you bloodline, you got promoted. Yeah, and you're going to keep it in the family. Right. And yeah, who knows how straight, loyal they going to be. Straight up nepotism. Right. 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 So... He shouldn't be mad about that. I mean, right, right, bruh. Like, okay, yeah. But, but he was he was definitely fishing for a compliment. Yeah, like, like what did you see in me? He he needed an <laughs> ego boost. He need he needed a boost for himself. But no, you don't need, be confident in what you are, where you at. You don't need to have that. Mm -hmm. You know why you so, honey? How would you feel when we first start dating? If I kept saying. Of all the men in the world, why did you pick me? What was so special uh -huh. about me? Uh huh. Uh -huh. What What was it special about? How many times in this relationship have I said, "Honey, why did you pick me?" Zero. You know why? Because I know why I'm special. Oh goodness! Just go. <laughs> this is This is D Mac coming back, giving his money back, telling telling um Jannar, I don't want to have nothing to do with this. I'm out, and he actually poked his chest out. He ain't, mm -hmm. he ain't just say, here, take the money. I'm done, man. I just don't want to do this. Right. Look, take your GD money, bro. I'm uh -huh. done. Right. Why he's so That's adamant. That's what Gennaro was like. What spooked you? What got exactly. you spooked? Now, right. he, now, this little boy, I don't know his name, but he don't come away. He, come, he comes across to me like somewhat of a hothead. Mm -hmm. He's not necessarily someone that you can make do whatever it is that you want him to do. Right. He seems like he has a little bit of a mind of his own. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he's a little bit more independent and in, in in solid in his own decision making. So do do you think that he's gonna wind up um with Tommy at some point in time? It's gonna Tommy come out eventually. I think he's probably gonna he's definitely gonna be curious about what type of relationship did this guy have with my father. Okay. And okay. I think it's, and ultimately it's gonna come to light that he's gonna reveal who he is or they're right. gonna find out. I'm just I just want to see how they unravel that. Tommy is trying to put together some organization. Mm -hmm. You got JP and his son right there, mm -hmm. right there. Because Tommy need bodies, mm -hmm. whether he admit it or not, he need bodies, mm -hmm. and this could be a body for him. In the next scene, we got Glow and Vic having a little sweetness out on the sidewalk. He's telling Glow, "Oh, I'm bringing you to the cookout. I mean, the dinner. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all, what happens at all these family dinners? I can't. I hope they have the dinner because you know that's going to be some mess." We done every family dinner, something crazy come from that table, and I can't wait to see it. But I almost thought we weren't going to get there because a drive-by incident happened. Somebody in a SS Chevrolet came by shooting up, and Glow pulled out her gun because she was about she that was action. She was ready. She was ready. Talk, hey, talk to him. Uh, Glow, Glow was about all that Glow, action, honey. Glow looked like she harder than Vic. <laughs> <laughs> And Vic need her. You know she was ready. Vic was still down there crouching down, see, and here she comes jumping up with her gun. She see, was ready. See, 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 y'all, y'all be thinking that it's all me. You heard her just demand that boy's manhood by saying "glow." She said "glow" look harder than Vic. She basically manhood? said, "She basically said Vic is in aisle number seven, the Charmin aisle of the grocery store." That's what she just said. That's what, no, and, and, and she be trying no, to make it seem like it's all me. That's what no, she said. But yeah, glow is about that action, and I'm here for it. I, uh -huh. I, if you, if somebody shoot at us and you pull out a gun, I ain't gonna feel nothing. But you trying to protect the youth, and that's how he felt. No, he did not feel like that. Yes, he no, did. No, he did not yes, feel he like. Did. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> not, not the way you did. Oh, you gonna love this scene. <laughs> oh Lord, that was a hot mess. We get we get introduced to Adrian, ladies and gentlemen, sitting at Diamond's table. Why the, the restaurant owner is cracking all kinds of jokes. This I is, love them in the background. Mm -hmm, they funny. But yeah, yeah. She's cracking all kinds of jokes in the background, whatever. And she's telling him to get up. He's like, no, sit down with me. He sits down with her. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? She's eating breakfast at dinner, which a lot of people do. Ain't nothing weird about that. But 
what has been the downfall of men since the beginning of time? No matter whether you take evolution or you take the Christianity theory, what has been the downfall of man in every situation, honey? Every situation. You answered it. Panty draws. Oh. A woman. <laughs> this boy don't even know this woman. She's eating. You don't. You don't know whether she got COVID. You don't know if she got uh, common cold. You don't know. But she's eating from this fork, and she offers him the fork, and he eats off the fork of her loins. Oh goodness! And then what you think happened after that, honey? Day in bed together. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. So when other people come up with theories, because ain't nobody came up with no theory yet, you heard it here first. You know where they came and listen. This chick. Is a plant for my boy Rojas. Uh -huh. Look at her. She almost looked like the girl that was down with Mecca in Power Book 2. But no, she got a little Spanish thing going on. Rojas' last name is Spanish. She is down with Rojas. And after Diamond got the panty draws, she getting texts from somebody, Diamond Sampson, sentenced 15 years. And I got one more theory for him too, honey. This could also be someone associated with Seamus the cop. Mm -hmm. But if I had to go with number one theory, number one theory, this is somebody with Rojas. Number two is Seamus the cop. Yeah. Honey, talk to me about this. Yeah, he making some, some stupid mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted. <laughs> but look, th this might have been a mistake, but that mistake looked like it felt pretty good. Oh, goodness. You know what I mean? You're going just... to make a mistake. At least let it feel good. I'm going to say. Go ahead. So... He goes at, so it's just you that lucky. Is that your lucky day? Is is that I mean, so he walks into the, the diner. Here's this beautiful woman sitting there. Um, they're having conversations. She's willing to feed him off her fork. Um, and then they end up in bed together. Not only that, then the next day <laughs> she shows up with more breakfast and breakfast for that night and for the next morning. So it's wouldn't you be suspicious? First, I think I did a good job. Bang, bang, bang. I did a great job. Uh -huh. um, secondly, this man ain't done nothing since he's been out of prison. Mm. You know, he ain't thinking with the right And it hand. just fall in your lap just like that. I mean, when you a kingpin crime ball, dude is like six Which foot. Which should make you that much more paranoid. Dude is like six foot six, bald head, look like Tyrese, got muscles. I'm sure people just throw themselves. That should him. make, no, that should make you that much more suspicious. You got all these people potentially who could be coming after you. And it's that easy. She just happened to be sitting in your booth. <laughs> Honey, I, I don't know how many times I got to Within explain this minutes, to you. Within five minutes, she act like she don't know who you are and what boxing is and whatever. But she can tell you whoever that fighter was. Sonny Liston. Yeah, so she can tell you that. Quote him and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and then just happened to be sitting at your table that's what I when, and wouldn't get up. Right. But, honey, there's a quotient for men. There's a there's a panty draws quotient. Oh, if we ain't had none in a long time, we start thinking with the wrong head more. Okay. So since he hasn't had, he's been in jail 20 years mm -hmm. and he's been out at least four weeks and ain't had none. So that's like 20 years and mm -hmm. four months. He ain't had none. Okay. So well, he's real low. The next day, send her home. He did send her home. When she came back again. So just take her food he and send her home. He should be a little, little, little curious about what's going on. So just take her food and say, go home. I hope he's smarter than that. No. And they, they kind of play him to be a little. I hope he's a little smarter than that. <laughs> okay. So then we get the doc, Doc Dahlia, has been kidnapped in essence, apprehended by Tommy, Claudia, and Lemon Lily. And basically, Tommy has some kind of information he's holding over the head of the doc mentioned by Lily. Mm -hmm. That's going to force her to work with them. Now they are going to pay her. Didn't they say she fudged numbers or something? That's to what make it looked like. Yes, that's what that's what yeah. was said when my, her, and Claudia was in right. the thing. So how do you think this? The dot went in the bathroom, didn't come back out. <laughs> we ain't. And you know what? Tommy <laughs> sent sent them to go look for her, and they never picked that back up. I'm no, like, they didn't. Oh, she didn't go on a little bit too long. <laughs> I need to check her and or at least ease her mind a little bit and tell her, you know what, we're just gonna have you train Liliana on how to do it, then you can go on about your business. We're not gonna keep you hostage. Right. But uh they didn't sell it like that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if we're gonna see the doc again. I think at the end of the day, they're gonna we're gonna keep the doc long enough so that Lily can learn how to make this. Drug. I mean, but why are they bringing up the fact that she's been in the bathroom that long to go check on her? Something happened. Something's up. Yeah. Something's up. If Something's not, they up. wouldn't even have that scene. Anymore. Right. Something is up. Maybe Lily gonna figure out. And they also made a point for us to understand that 
my has paid for this whole chemical factory. Uh -huh. Whole thing paid for. Man, you know how much money that so is? So they got a factory that, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. bro. Whoa. Man, we got to get in there and get the training because yep. I'm sure the girl, they don't think that this girl going to be mm -mm. at their mercy from here on out making no. drugs from years ago. Not, not at all. Yeah. And then, honey, then we get to the funny stuff. Then we get to them using this drug. Have you ever wanted to see oh. what a man looked like when he's having a nutgasm? That's it right there. Ladies and gentlemen, this dude took them drugs, and this is the look of a man having a big O. This looks more intense than a big O. Look at the look on this dude's face. Mm -hmm. But he ain't the only one that took the drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, what did you have to say about the boss woman here taking? Look, look on her face, looking like the walking dead. Right. What in All the right. world? And I'm like, wouldn't you stand back a little bit longer just to make sure he don't fall over? <laughs> I don't want none of that. Do you like, hear me? Whatever whatever that stuff is, I don't want that. And when I she looked at it, she was like, here, you take it. And he was just like, okay, he, took it. Yeah, he, he took it. Yeah, he took it. He took it and look at him. He's in another planet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> NASA yeah. need an astronaut. He uh, flew away. Yeah. 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 Uh, what uh, if it's another two minutes he would have felt? She don't care. She wants something too. Yeah, she, had, she was about that action, uh, man. She had to she had to see what was going on. And I'm like, at least get it out of his hand because he's about to fall. <laughs> he's about to drop it. <laughs> then, ladies and gentlemen, this whole episode, Tommy has been warning um, Claudia about Reggie because she's been trying to get Reggie some drugs. He's been blowing her up mm -hmm. and she goes to him. And I'm glad that Claudia listened to Tommy mm -hmm. because she's going to start saying that I can trust this dude. He knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Reggie tries to attack Claudia Claudia got her second bodies. First of all, she took her nail, poked them in the eye, or did she whip out that ice pick again? Yeah, slipped them in the eye. Then she took his gun and shot him in the other eye. Goodbye, Reggie. What kind of a friend was Reggie? Right. right. <laughs> Tommy told her. Yeah, he said but, we ain't friends. Here's, all. You ghosted me. Here's the thing that scares me about that. This dude was treating her like crackheads treat people when they want crack. Uh -huh. He was blowing up her phone all day. He might have been and, and, on that stuff. And could not get up with her, ladies and gentlemen, so much so that he followed her, tried to apprehend her and kill her because he wanted the drugs. Now, that could be a problem if you got these people out here Is in the streets. Is that a streets. prelude of what's to come, potentially? Well, that's what I'm here for. That's that, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to uh -huh. get prelude. So that's what I'm telling y'all. Everybody gonna be aggressive. They're gonna be zombies on the street. Yes, they're gonna be walking zombies. Uh -huh. And then we end this thing, ladies and gentlemen, on Daddy Flynn showing you that he about that. Life. Showing <laughs> you that he is about it, about it, about it. Master P about it. Now, is it interesting that so if Vic is supposed to be so you know I'm doing this on my own? It did strike me as I'm about to run tail daddy. Somebody tried to shoot me. Yeah. Because yeah. he ran home, he ran back and was like, somebody was after me, tried to take me out. So he's still running to his right. daddy for cover. And not only that, but the daddy got mad at him because he basically found out you had been doing business with Tommy. Right. And he told him Tommy is off limits. Tommy is not to be working with. Mm -hmm. But Daddy Flynn tried to clean up the situation, took out all these Serb dudes, and left the girl alive to go oh, tell he Musevich. Just, he just walked up in there and, and said, did he have on a trench coat? Look like a trench coat or something. He had on them glasses, just man. Glasses, yeah. walked up in there like, okay, let me let me go handle this. You don't mess right. with my baby boy. Exactly. <laughs> you, don't, you don't mess with what's going to be the legacy for my family. Uh -huh. He came in there looking like he was about to host the prices right by himself now, now. everybody else is running from the serve right this guy's just like oh the serves mess with my boy yeah it's like dude it was like f uh, you f the serve who's right. the serve i'm coming to he goes in there alone didn't even get paul to come with him right now this proved to me that he's tough now uh -huh. this made me feel like he is Maybe tough he, yeah. tough in this game yeah. now and most of the time people when you know that your mortality is in near sight you see it you got cancer something that can kill you you start acting like somebody who's up against the wall. Mm -hmm. You you throw caution to the wind. You get out here and you do crazy stuff. But ladies and gentlemen, Me that and Gloria better watch out. Even though it looks like she can hold her own. But he just he you think he did even She's though he's threatening the dynasty. Right, right, right. So ladies and gentlemen, please post us all your comments, share our videos. We got up to 350 on a Sunday. I'm proud of you, man. You so do good. good. You do good business. You can I lick your scar? No. Okay. No. <laughs> See, she be trying to act like she all sweet and nice, but y'all don't call her I twice am. today. Be I sure am. to like the video, comment, subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow with Moochie and Rojas because I'm going to ask Rojas this. I'm going to say, Rojas, 
did you send that lovely Adrian with that wig she was wearing to seduce Diamond? Mm -hmm. Seduce them, lick her for it, and then hand it to him. <laughs> Till that next sex is hell video, y'all. We'll see you. Peace. <laughs>